and they put they put like scaffolding above the tube tunnel, um, almost like monkey bars. Wow, they were in right trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and I I was I was just r- reckless, but I <laughs> I did a really mad thing. I kind of like monkey barred across it with a kestrel in my teeth. Stop it off. You believe that? It's true. You, you, you can you can you can verify that with even few more zom if you ever get them to verify. Oh, but anyway, wow. just and and then we got across. I don't know how them look. I think they just climbed down a walk. I don't know why I went across like that. That's <laughs> like bit, some, in the, in move for some crypto factor, yeah. <laughs> just mad. We were just mad teenagers, early twenty somethings. You know what I mean? Just crazy, mm. bit, mad shit, mad risks, man. When mm. I think about it, crazy risks. What's the so, craziest risk you've ever kind of? Face yourself with. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, that's a big question for, you know what I mean? Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be, could be, choose to be. Yes, people, it's that time again. We're doing it every single week. This is the sport in our street culture. And if you want more of that, go to Keller Kellervision app. Yeah, you know what to do. Free download, iPhone, Android for all your street culture sports. And then some, we've got mini mixes, big mixes, ducks and all sorts of stuff. And of course, the notorious podcast that keeps on giving. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's like Christmas every single week out here. And uh, <laughs> my guest, to say the least, is bringing the goodies. Uh, currently housing a bag of new comics in, the, in, in, in his armory called uh, Black Raindrops, part of the Zoop Patrol comics. He's also one hell of an OG in the 90s era of graffiti DDS inspired and enrolled. He took on the constabulary and he won. This is the mighty Yan DDS inside the place. How are we, brother? I'm good, mate. I'm good. How are you? All right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I know this isn't your first drop. Big shout out to Arms House, your mom's house, because uh, you're doing the rounds at the moment. You have got one hell of a comic and we're going to drop this bang on the day of when it comes out. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good, man. Just uh, doing all the, you know, promo bits and bobs, what I can, you know, just trying to get get a bit of hype going for it. Um, yeah, it's not easy. You know, everyone that's done their own sort of things knows that it's difficult balancing, you know, trying to bring in money, working, you know, family, things on the side. It's, it's crazy. Just it's full, a, it, full pelt, you know. It is, brother. It's a it's a side hustle and a half. It's it's almost like the easier you make it look, the harder it actually was, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know about making it look easy. I'm just I'm just trying to get this stuff out to the people and just trying to get some response, you know. And and hopefully um, they'll like it when it comes out. I'm, you know, I'm quietly confident that people will like it. It's got it's got a good story. There's a good story and. There's a lot of stuff about, you know, I'm trying to link in stuff about London and, and real history and, you know, it's a mishmash of things, you know. It's kind of drawing on my own experiences. Some of the characters are sort of loosely based on other people that I know. Some of them aren't. Some of them, you know, like it's kind of, it, it's a real mix of stuff, but it's all kind of come out of my head more or less. So, yeah, it's quite... um it's quite close to home, but at the same time, there's there's laughs in it, you know. There's there's fantasy in it. There's a lot of different things going on. Congratulations, know? brother! I mean, it's no mean feat. Whatever walk of life you're coming from in in the arts world to to pull together something that from inception has has landed on a page, and then you're able to manufacture it, getting a limited run out alone. It's it's <laughs> it's a task. I mean, you know. How's it feel to actually have a hard copy of a product in your hand? Oh, when, you... when I first got the copy, you know, when I first got it, it was um, it was mind blowing because it's one of the doing a comic is one of the things that you really don't see what you're doing right until you've got the hard copy in your hands. Just because 
you know, you're doing, you, you have to sort of make lots of passes over the same thing. So like you do the light, you know, first of all, you come up with a story, then you have to do the sort of storyboarding, the loose storyboarding, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to do the actual line drawings. Then you have to do the coloring. Then you've got to do the speech bubbles and the speech, you know, and then, and then you have to do graph, the graphic design of the book and all that. So it's, you know, you're talking about going over the same thing, you know, six or seven times and not really seeing a, a finished product because you can't, but then by the nature of it, until the, the publisher or the printer sent you the, the, um, you know, the copy. So it's by its nature, you don't really get any satisfaction out of it personally until it lands, you know, and then it, then you kind of been through it so much. You've put so much effort. You're sick to death of it. <laughs> but now it's, I feel like in my head, it's almost like, oh, this is so boring. I've, fuck it. I've looked over it a million times and, you know, whereas really no one's seen it. And I've kind of, I'm putting my, how I'm looking at it into my head and thinking, oh yeah, well, it's old news now. Whereas mm. no one's really seen anything. And for them, it's going to be obviously new and all the rest of it. But it's hard to, remember that as as the person that made something you know so i'm sure it's the same with all kind of art and you know rec music and everything you know yeah but you're working i hear you 100 percent, and I, I know that i know that feeling what differentiates what you're saying there to any normal scenario is you've got to constantly share your idea with a manufacturer, with a with a proofreader, or someone of that description, where where you're constantly having to justify, it. and like you say, you lose the central reason as to why this was a great idea. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like any process. It, it, if you know, when it gets serious, you, you know, it kind of takes the fun out of it a bit, and you know, it's kind of you you kind of have to make a conscious sort of effort to drag yourself back to the fun element and what it was about in the first place but mm. um yeah it's uh you know it's it, uh, hopefully it's going to go down well and you know hopefully it will be it will enable me to to do the part two which i'm already kind of thinking about and but you know it's financial constraints you know work all the rest of it mm. it's difficult out there everyone's everyone's struggling you know but that's being said it is a perfect time to be particularly as a graph writer to be putting out products like this never more has it served not only a purpose for the creator but there's a well, hungry audience that yeah, i mean it, i think it's a first it's the first comic or graphic novel about you know gr graph i don't know you know definitely about london graph but it's not yeah. about london graph but it got it's got london graph in it it's got spots in it it's got the tube in it you know it's got london streets in it so it's yeah, it, it, i think it's a first about the subject matter which yeah. you know i don't know whether there's there's been you know comics or graphic novels made in america about graph i'm not i don't think there has but mm. so it's kind of a first in that way that's awesome bro. and i think for me doing a first is almost more important than you know, a lot of other things, you know, if you're the, like, you know, like, I t yeah, I, I mean, I, I felt like we kind of did the same with Chrome and Black, you know, mm. it was the first shop that we really kind of like, we we made a brand, you know, out of a graph shop. I, I, I don't know any other graph shops that really did that. Mm. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So it's Before it's like, cool. I, I kind of feel like if you're, if you're doing something for the first time, you know, people have got to just respect that in itself. Do, you, know what I Do mean? you feed off of that, Jan? Do you feed off the the idea of being the first to engage in something that has never been done? You know, row testing aside, you know, you, it's like you, you're building a plane, you're going to fly it as well. Do you, is that you get off on that? Yeah, I think, I think you know, you get off on challenging yourself. You know, and and doing things that have been done, you kind of, you know, it's easier to sort of find the track and follow someone else's previous line, you know, but yeah. if you're doing something for the first time, it's more, it's more difficult, but you get to put in more of yourself and more of what you think it should be mm. as, a, as, as opposed to sort of looking at what someone else has done and trying to do something better, you know, or trying to do something different or whatever, you know, it's like, 
I think it's 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 not for everyone mm-hmm. um, because it because of because of the nature of it, it's quite a lot of work. You know, it's like yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. You know, I could go into a lot of things about it that I didn't realise how much work it was going to be in the beginning. I kind of when I started doing it and thinking, right, I've got to do this much per day, this many pages, this that. You know, it's regret, quite regret immediately sinks in. Well, yeah, you get, you know, you go through phases of like working tirelessly for you know months, maybe on on one aspect of it. Like I said, you do the line drawing first, you know, and then as you as you as you're doing the line drawings, um, you're getting better and better at them. So mm. you know, the line drawings that are sort of you know towards the end of the book or the middle of the book are, are, are better than the ones in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then, I love that though. That's dope. You know, because you learn as you're going along. You know, no one just does the same. You know, if you do, if you're doing a, a, a sort of project, you get better at it. It's like anything. Mm-hmm. Even manual works the same. You know, whether you're doing chipping or whatever, bricky, bricky or whatever. You know, it's mm-hmm. kind of like you just get better at, as you go along. That's um, right. And, it's, and you know, the same thing happened with the coloring. You know, I started. You know, I started doing clouds when they're painting between the trains and that, and you can see the clouds of paint going above the the trains. You know, a lot of writers will will know that kind of when you look up and you see the you're in the darkness and you look up and there's a floodlight coming across the top of the train, and you see the spray paint mist going into the floodlight. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, so when you know, I kind of discuss, I, I kind of, I did it in a certain way at first, and then. I worked out a different, a slightly better way to do it. And so, you know, it's things like that. And, but then you've got to go back and make sure that everything is consistent as possible, you know, and then you, mm. you've got to draw a line about how many times you go back or how, you know, where you're going to stop correcting because you just get better and better as you go through it. But then you can't just keep going back and back and back constantly. Because you'd be stacking so, on either end each time. Well, you, you kind of, you never finish. You, yeah. you, you know, you just, because progression is forever. You always get better at things the more you do them. So but anyway, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's a long process, but you know, it, like you said, it's, um, it's tied into graph. So it's, it was enjoyable to do, you know, it's not, it's, uh, it's drawn on, on, you know, a lot of my experiences in, you know, when I was doing stuff and, mm. um, it's very personal, you know, it's, it's, to me and um, to a lot of people that did it, I think, you know, I mean, we were kind of like, you know, when we were really active in the sort of um, in the nineties and the um, early thousands, mm. uh, we were sort of like, you know, we were the, the best at our game, the top of our game, if you will. Yeah. And and so, you kind of got to have a life to be able to write a, a, a story like you have in a comic you've you guys ran tyranny well we can't, yeah i mean you know, we, yeah we we were we were all over the place we were you know we were all over the trains like in and out of the driver's cabs while he was driving the train at the other end you know like no no hold on hold on hold on for wait wait explain that so basically um we used to get into the, the cab, the driver's cab at the other end of the train, right? Right. So when the driver's driving a particular direction, we'd get into the back. Now, we'd either get in by jumping off the platform. So the tra- imagine the train pulls into the platform yeah. and it stops for however many seconds it is. Just as it rolls to a stop, literally the driver hasn't managed to look at the mirrors or the camera f- monitors that he's got to look down the platform, right? <laughs> okay. When he stops the train, he looks at the box that's at the end of the platform and he can see all of the cameras on the platform. That's right. Right. So just before he'd even looked at that, we'd already jumped off the platform onto the back of the train and into the door and then sit down or like lie down on the floor. Right. And then, so he doesn't know that we're in there. Oh my God. But that was like a regular thing. And then, and then, or one person would jump off the thing and the rest of the crew would get in normally. And then we just, the person that had jumped off would just open the, the door of the driver's cab and everyone would pile into the driver's cab in front of horrified commuters. <laughs> they wow. Must been, they must have just been thinking, who the fuck are these? Like? <laughs> but anyway, um, and that was usually, you know, to roll some joints and just, just, just the, 
just to be sort of like off radar, just to be in the cab. We'd have, we'd be able to blaze a zoot in there and, you know, just whatever. But that was kind of, that was like constant. Oh, that was how we used to roll, man. It was like, we were, we were just like on the system, like all the time. All you know? the time. A nonstop. Yeah. yeah. Like every day we'd meet up and go, go somewhere, do something. And it would involve, you know, either racking paint for later, for the mission later, or, um, you know, racking clothes to sell or swap for draw from a, I won't say his name, but from a writer that we all used to go up to his house. Right. With tea. But anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So like, you know, there was, there were plots that there were stations we used to plot at. Like we used to plot at, um, West Ken underneath the bridge. There's a little bridge at the end of the platform, at the end of the station that, that goes, that, um, it goes over, it goes over from the station to the, um, they've got like an LU training center at West Ken station. Right. It's, like, it's like where they've got a fake station. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I, I've, I think I've seen pictures of it before. They've got like a fake platform. It's about, I don't know, three meters long. And then right. it's like a fake train drawn, like coming out of the tunnel and, or, or an actual model of one. And then they teach the, the new recruits about the rail, the live rail and this running yes. rails and all that shit. Yeah. Anyway, there was a, there was a footbridge that there was a, there's a, there's a bridge that goes over the end of the platform. And we used to plot underneath the bridge and, you know, just sometimes we'd pop a few windows of the district as it like left or someone would jump out and bomb it, bomb the train and quickly hide back into this thing. Cause it was like, it was behind cables and behind like there was a tube sign there as well. So imagine a gravel embankment that sort of like goes up like that. Yeah? Yes. Got the bridge over. We were like little rats in the, it, underneath it. No way. Yeah, anyway, but that was that was there. So imagine the whole underground, there was always plots that were, you know, certain stations. Like, like when I first started writing, you know, this is like 93, I was proper young. Mm. I used to go Richmond. So hold, hold on, how old would you have been at that time? I was about 16. Yeah, we were around the same age. So that got, 15, I, 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 get, I get the mentality of that age for sure. You know, it was, you know, it was, uh, what, Cypress Hill. Um, Black Sunday album and... Yeah, Snoop Dogg. That's it, yeah. Um, you know, like, all the, all the sort of woo co coming out, all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tribal Quest Bean. album. Yeah, yeah, I, I know the ones. Anyway, I was going to Richmond College and I, I met all of them, all of the, a lot of the MTS lot through Richmond College and DDS. Not so much DDS, but people like Teach and... Um, yeah, teach and who else did I meet through? Well, I kind of met them through the MTS lot. But anyway, so, mm -hmm. so Richmond College, obviously Richmond Station terminates. It's a termina termination stop for the district line, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got, two, you've got two district line platforms. Well, no, one platform with the district line going like either side. And then one of the sides, you had a long kind of like high wall with an alleyway on the other side, but like a raised alleyway that ran about, you know, I don't know, about two meters above, above like where, uh, above where the train sort of, so if you're on a platform, you're looking at the train pulls in, in front of you. Yeah. Uh, you, basically the floor level of this alleyway was probably sort of halfway up the windows. Okay. Okay. Right. Train, on sense. the other side yeah, yeah. of the train, right? So you can't see. So basically what we used to do is jump over the wall of this alleyway on the other side mm -hmm. and then get underneath it where there was, again, there was like a cavity, right? So this is the floor of the alleyway. Yeah. The dirt underneath. Yeah. The train would lay up here and you could yeah. just come out, bomb the train. But I used to do dubs there. What, there was that much space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, there was, there was at Whoa. least like two or three feet more, maybe more. So you could do dubs there and then the train would leave. You just scuttle underneath the little thing and hide like a rat. Wow. That was that, that I've done, I've I done, I've done quite a lot of stuff there and I've just go there on my own after, after college and daytime, all daytime. Yeah, like, because you just didn't get seen. No one could see you because this, this alley is still there exactly the same. <laughs> really? You still do the same thing now. 
Wow. But back then, obviously, back then you could you could climb in between the carriages as well and jump down because they, they didn't have that that silly plastic thing that that they brought that in to stop people from because a lot of pissheads when they're drunk and that they'll fall in between the carriages and get mangled and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they a put those that. plastic flat things there. Yeah. Just apparently to stop people doing that, but obviously that interfered with us being able to sort of. Well, you still can. You still you could kind of like. You could always step on the pipes that join the two carriages that used to hang down. That's yeah, like yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of like yeah, yeah. An intermediate step before you stepped onto the ground. It's funny how those that 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 kind of like you said that plastic wall thing that only was ever implemented in those chosen stations. It wasn't really. It, it never no, progressed no, no. to I other mean, places. No, no, it's on the train, part of the train. Oh, so you're not talking about? Okay, I understand. Okay, got no, you. Th- you you mean? I know what you mean. You mean yeah. the sort of like um. The new platforms that have got that's it. On it. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. This is so. Imagine in between each carriage on both sides, there's like a plastic, sort of like a plastic kind of square thing that that is made out of sort of plastic plastic fabric, and it's got springs holding it on. So if you push against, oh it, yeah, I've seen it. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's the spot yeah, it's that, like a cover. The yeah, yeah. The, uh, that's to stop people falling in between the carriages, but it kind of messed with us you. a bit from climbing up and down. But anyway. Um, yeah, so, so we were like, we were all over the place. We were like, part, part of the system is an understatement. You know, <laughs> like we were just like little rats yeah. around, you know, like, but like things like if, um, if it come on top and we had paint, we just, we just pop the seats open and just plot our paint under the seats and then look at the carriage number. And you know what train it is, what what carriage that, that you left your paint on. Um, yeah, because I've seen people pop the seats um, more recently, actually. And yeah, uh, like it used to, they used to just be open, right? And then mm. I can't remember when it was during the nineties. They started putting these little like plastic security tag things, which were just a seat, was just to show if you broke it off. You know what I mean? They knew that they had to put the another seal. one on. Yeah, but um, and that was that was probably to do with terrorism that they kind of. They put those things on there because yeah. obviously people can put bombs in trains and all the rest of it. Yeah, 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 Which, yeah, yeah. To me, it kind of, it really kind of highlighted that actually all of the efforts that they're doing and the money they're spending on against the IRA at that time yeah. was just nonsense because you could always just whack a bomb under under the seat on a train and just get off it. And it would, you know, it's like, it, yeah. it was ridiculously easy to do stuff if you wanted to. Well, you know, as, even as a writer, you find a way. You know, it's, it's just—it's just what it is, isn't it? You know? Yeah. But um, yeah. Sometimes I used to do things like I remember one time I was on a train on uh, coming into Baker Street with it was me, Donka, Fume, and I think Dre, and nice. we were doing insides, and um, the train just stopped outside of Baker Street. And the driver made some bullshit like excuse. I can't remember what he said. Mm. But then Fume was like, right, right, split up, split up. We're getting hotted. We're getting hotted. Someone said it. I can't remember who. Mm-hmm. So me and Fume kind of sat together or on the same carriage. And um, the old classic, get the newspaper, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, put some glasses on. <laughs> Styling it out. <laughs> so like, so we sat on a carriage and then I think, um, Donker and Dre went on the carriage in front or something and they got nicked. Someone got, I think Donker got nicked. So they both got nicked. But what they do is they pull the train so that the, the driver's cab is literally just touching the, pla- the beginning of the platform. And then the police would get into the, the train like that. Oh, they get through the front of the, the, the Through the front yeah. and walk down because they, I don't know how they knew that we'd been bombing, but anyway. Wow. Me, and Fume, me and Fume got away that day. I think Dre and Donka got nicked, or one of them got nicked. Big up Dre, man. Donka. Wow, like these are names. Jeez. Crazy. Yeah, um, you know, Edgware Road was always a spot you'd see someone. It used to be a writer's bench, like a little bit before my time, but. Whereabouts was it in Edgware? Because that's a sizable uh, yeah. cross. Edgware Road. It was, so it was on the Little Met right. platform, the, the, over, the above ground part of it. And. Um, oh, yeah. It was on the platform going towards uh, Bayswater, or okay. sort of going going west, basically. Yeah, yeah. It was on that at the end of that platform. Mad. 
But yeah, and, um, I met Rhyme there once. Big nice. Up, big up Rhyme. Yeah. TU. Yeah. Big crew. You're yeah. in TU, aren't you? Yeah. Big up TU. Come on. Big up All TU. Day. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit in a comic about, well, not about TU, but I mentioned. I mentioned them in it, but it's a good little mention. It kind of like yeah. sounds good. Wicked. Yeah, yeah man. You're going to love um, it. <laughs> what else? Yeah, man. You know, Farringdon later on, Farringdon was like the proper meetup spot. Well, let's let's talk about Farringdon for a minute, because obviously this is folklore history right here, you know, before prefabric, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Prefabric, yeah. Explain to me the... What explain to me the escapades that went on in that particular era where fabric was pretty much the club by the way people for those who don't know um was pretty much a meat house wasn't it it was like a big fridge was, yeah, am i right yeah i mean i first done f farrington in like 94 with fume and agro mm -hmm. three of us um and you know back then it was just a thing of like you waited for the cleaners to go and there weren't any security then like you didn't have security on yards. So mm -hmm. you just waited for the cleaners to go. And um and that was it. That was you basically till till the you know, you had a good old at least an hour. But I mean we used to paint for longer quite a lot of times. But um uh yeah, so so it was it was the one place I remember I remember Zom Zom said once. Yeah, you know, he, he said, I can't believe how many ways there are in still to this day that we're finding new ways to get into to Farringdon. You know, wow. there was so many ways in. There was like, oh, you can oh, God, bloody list them now. Like you, you, you could come off Barbican platform and walk through the Thames Link Tunnel. Mm. And then the years that we were using the building where Fabric is now at the club yeah um you could get in through through that building so like they for some reason there was they put these um i think i think it was before they'd even started building it but they would put in these kind of like big massive like jail bars like proper metal bars you know mm -hmm. like over this like over this one bit of wall mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was, I think it it must have been open behind. I can't remember if it was open behind. But anyway, I remember I remember one mission we did in 98, just going forward a bit. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I didn't do it. I did it in 94 once, and then I never went, I didn't go back there till about 98. Right. Bear in mind, during that time. Put your uh, mask up a little bit there, kid. What's that? Put that up a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Yes, the one. Bear in mind, during that time, people like Fuel was do were doing it. Yeah, still around that time, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, in 94, like that famous feel, um, Teach Tarzan whole car, that was banging. Crazy. Um, wow. You know, I don't know I don't know who was doing it sort of like after 90, I think 95, yeah, them lot did top to bottom whole cars, Fume and, and maybe Zom. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, so the next time I went back was 98. And... Um, yeah, there were these big jail bars on that wall, and we 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 all hung off them and ripped them down. But they were super heavy. It's lucky they didn't land on anyone. Wow. I mean, you're talking at least like two, three hundred kilos of metal. Yeah, yeah, you're doing fucked. Yeah, if you like, if that lands on you, you're fucked. But anyway, yeah, yeah. and then and then we had access in into the building, right? And the building was important because once you got into that basement and you made your way to the front. That's where you come out of that door that was just that come out straight into the yard in between the two trains. That sounds incredible. And I've heard about this door before. That must have been just like, you know, heaven to open up into. Yeah, it was a it was like a portal. I think Fuel Fuel called it the portal, you know. It's like it was uh it had a it was a proper thick door as well. It's like, you know, mm. about half a foot thick, and it was like I think it had like a round like a round handle on the inside. Wow. It had like a mad, it had a mad, like weird, like metal kind of lever thing that you could you pull out. And I don't know what the round, I can't remember, you know, things are getting a bit misty now, but anyway. That's why we got to document it. That sounds incredible. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, that would just wow. you'd open that door and and you'd have the two trains like like literally like almost you could almost lean out of the door and touch them. You know, they were kind of either side of you and you and because of the way that yard that the, the trains curved round at the front, when you're at the back of the yard, you can't be seen. You know, because mm, it's, it's be just a curved the wall. Buildings, the buildings above and around because it's all it's kind of like in a pit, Farringdon. It's kind of it's it's in between loads of buildings that are kind of higher around it. Right, so it's like a, it's almost like you're in a bat cave almost. Yeah, or well, like a like a sort of not an amphitheater, but you know. A square pit almost, you know. Yeah, I get you. Anyway, so um yeah, so that that was you know, that was another way in. One time we did it, I remember I did it with Fume and Zom and we had Blink with us. <laughs> nice. Blink was rolling, big up blink. Yeah, big up blink, wicked. Um we had Blink with us and they'd put like they'd put like um they put scaffolding above the tube tunnel. So You've got the Farringdon Yard in the middle. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, the Thameslink tunnels on on one side, and you've got the tube tunnels on the other side, running right. both. Um, and they put they put like scaffolding above the tube tunnel, um, almost like monkey bars. Wow, they were in right trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and I I was I was just r- reckless, but I <laughs> I did a really mad thing. I kind of like monkey barred across it with a kestrel in my teeth stop it off you believe that it's true you you, you can you can you can verify that with either few more zom if you ever get them to verify oh, them. anyway wow. just and, and then we got across i don't know how them look i think they just climbed down a walk i don't know why i went across like that <laughs> That's like bit, some, in, in move for some crypto factor yeah <laughs> it's just mad we were just mad teenagers early 20 somethings you know what i mean just crazy mm. bit, mad shit mad risks man when mm. i think about it crazy risks what's the so, craziest risk you've ever kind of faced yourself with oh fucking hell yeah that's a big question for you know what i mean what's, da- what's dangerous is oh god this that feeling of Oh, fuck that's it. what I want. Well, I want the thing that gives you that feeling now. All right, that, all right, I'll tell you that there was this one time we did, we did Victoria, right, which is like a deep level tunnel uh, yard, mm-hmm. right. For mm-hmm. those of you who don't know, on a Victoria line, but basically we found a way to get into the tunnels um, that that was that needed. You had to walk a good like. 15 maybe yeah 15 minutes or like a little jog for sort of 10 minutes to get to the to get to the yard but you had to go down a tunnel right so anyway cut a long story short we've got down we've got so that those deep level things they've got like a they've got a shaft that comes down and then the tunnels are on either side right Mm -hmm. back and forth kind of thing right Mm -hmm. so basically we've got down to that middle bit and um all the lights were See, on a tube, when the lights are on, it means there's no juice. When the lights are off, it means there's juice and the trains can be running, right? So we got down there and it's in the middle of the night. It's like one one in the morning, two in the morning. So there, mm. there shouldn't have been any trains running. And, of course, they were testing the new Victoria Line trains. Mm-mm. This is before they'd come out. Wow. So we're all in there. There was about, mind you, there's about 15 of us. It was like me, Shoe, Tube was there. Neat, no, it was Neat there. Neat might have been there. Steez, Fume, my my brother. Um, wow. Who else was there? Me, Rock was there. Tox was there. Oh, there was loads of us. Oh, my God. This would have been a graffiti massacre. For anyway, so... Lot. So we basically we've got down to this bit, and then we've we, to our horror, these these ghost trains have just roared past one way, like literally it was like yeah. a ghost train. All the lights were out. It was just horrible. Oh my! And and then it's roared God. past one way, and then we were like, oh fuck, what are we gonna do? Like da da da, you know? We're there's fucked, all this, yeah. There's all this conversation going on, and people say, yeah. no, we can't do it that way. No, we're wicked. You know what I mean? There's all this like, hey, but if we go down. So, and then, so, so like we, this went on for like, you know, 10 minutes or something. 
And then another one's gone phew, the other way. Oh, stop so it like, off. That was, that was extra, that was extra throbbing now. Everyone's like, oh my God, like these trains are going like, you know, 80 miles an hour or whatever, 60 Testing miles. Testing out the track, yeah. And there's nowhere to hide in those tunnels. They're like round bubble tunnels for bubble trains, you know? Like the best you get on a Victoria line, which is the only one, it's got like a little step. I think it's, I don't know if it's on both sides, but there's right. a little step that in theory, if you lay down, when It'll a train is coming and sort of hugged against the wall. But bear in mind, when trains go past, they can suck you under. They can suck you in because they cause a suction, a vacuum thing. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, I don't even want to think about it. Anyway, so, <laughs> so this train's gone bang that way. And it, we, we need to go this way, right? And the one's just gone past. So we made this plan. We said, all right. Because it, it, enough time had gone past, we realised there's only two trains on this. Well, we thought there's only two trains on this track. Yeah. They're testing them. One's gone that way. Now the other one's gone that way, right? Yeah. So we said, all right. So if one's gone that way, we better hurry up and go now. Because that one that went that way will be coming back. <laughs> Oh my god! So this is where the mad frog comes in. I've, I I can't really express how what a stupid and dangerous and frobbing thing this was to do, because we didn't have no torches. We didn't have nothing, nothing. We didn't even have smartphones then. So all we had was some budget little brick phones with the little green glowing like some you know someone had something with a some kind of light, but basically we didn't have any light either. And there's that many of us and the juice is on. So we've got to walk down the tracks, right, with the juice on, knowing that there's a train could come and how it's going to see us. Got me sweating and thinking about it. Bro, it was, uh, you know, like, I'll tell you what, there were times between go, get, getting onto those tracks and walking to where the layup is, there were times I was like, I just had this other feeling that I've never really had before that was like, I can't describe it. It was horrible. It was like, I don't know. It was almost like... Explain it. Death is close, you know? I don't know how else to sort of describe it. Really? You felt that? You felt yeah, yeah, the presence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I felt that fully like, right, this is proper serious now. And we, you know, like someone would say something and then we'd break out into a jog because everyone was feeling it. We'd start jogging and then slow down again and someone else would say something and we'd start jogging again. <laughs> like it was a proper throb. And, it, and the tunnels, the, tu the, 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 the length of the tunnel between each station on Victoria Line, they're long. It's a long distance. Yeah. They're not short because the, the Victoria Line wings, it goes fast. So it doesn't seem that long when you're on it. Yeah. Anyway, that was one of the times I just, I just thought, you know what? If did you get, how, well, clearly you got out, but how did it all play out? So we got down there and the way Victoria is, if, there's two, there's two tunnel layups, right? And you've got the running tracks on either side of those. Yeah. So you get into where the layups is, you're safe. You know, it's all cushy and that. And there's a shaft yeah. that goes up and you can get out that way and whatnot. Right. But anyway, so basically, if the, on one of the layups, you've got like quite a lot of space to paint, like maybe two or three feet. Mm. And the other one is really tight. And the train was in the wrong one. So it was in the tight one. So loads of people were like, oh, fuck this. I'm not painting. Uh, I can't remember who didn't want to paint, but I was just like, do you know what? We've mission to come down here, so yeah. fuck it. And, but the thing is, when you're painting in those tunnel layups, it's another level of danger because your feet are all sort of almost like tucking under the third rail because the wall of the tunnel goes down and where it curves down, you've got the rails, right? Yeah, that's right. And your feet end up kind of your toes almost go under the rail. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so dangerous. When I think back, it's just like, you know, it's just the most dangerous thing ever. Because if that train decides to pull out, you're, you're finished. Anyway, so, yeah, so we ended up doing it. And as if that's not enough, then getting photos is a mission as well because yeah. there's only one yard on that line. That's Northumberland Park. And then you've got to go up and – go to that area which is like you know it's, it's quite hot for that for taking photos anyway it's a long way away as well but yeah we managed to get some shots of that i've got some shots of that i think um but yeah it was uh it was a crazy night there's video footage of it i think fume got footage of it 
probably be in that film if it ever comes out. I think the biggest problem with all of this is, and this is to my, first of all, do not try any of what we're talking about at home, people. You know I mean, it's a nice story. It's, 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 one, for, it's, it's one for prosperity. If, if he was rhyming, he'd be rapping. It's just words. Um, but uh, the truth be told, once you've done something like that, how in the moment can you be like you're in there painting? All I'll be thinking is, oh, that was a fucking nightmare to get in. It's gonna be a fucking even more of a hell. Yeah, like a lot of times when when I'm when I've been doing things like that, I thought, you know, in my head, I thought this is I'm not doing this again, or yeah. you know, fuck this. You know what I mean? Like all of those thoughts go through my have been through my head. At different times. How many times do you think that's gone through? I mean, this is an approximation of how many times you've painted train, but but <laughs> or yours at least. How, like, <laughs> how many times have you said that to yourself, do you reckon? Only on the dangerous ones when it's like risk to your life, you know, yeah. and 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 more so as I got older. I think when I was young, I didn't realise, you know, I didn't think about it as much how dangerous it can be. Does it play with your constitution now? What do you mean? Well, does it? You said you you get the throb. You feel like, well, you know, this this surge of anxiety because mortality, you know, is real as we get to our ages, as we get older. Anybody, but um, does it send a level of anxiety in you even now when you think about that stuff? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but but obviously, I know I'm not there, so it's all right. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I just think. You know, I just think, well, I'm lucky to get away with it. Don't sort of, uh, you know, make sure you don't put yourself in that position again. And obviously being older and having kids and all that now, I wouldn't. But, you know, it's like it's like anything. If I did sat there and – because I've got quite a strong imagination. If I sat there and thought about it, I could probably increase my heart rate thinking about those nights. Yeah, mm. I could probably sit there and start sweating. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I'm too, I choose not to yeah, because yeah. it's not a nice feeling, you know. But you know, the amount of times that I felt that, not that many, because a lot of, you know, a lot of yards, you're not in that kind of danger. No, you, you, you know, that you, you're in an open. A lot of the yards in London are um, open air. A self-induced trauma, like the, the tunnel layups in London are super dodgy, like as in dangerous. Like yeah. most of them are, are quite dangerous. I think, in fact, I think someone lost their life quite recently yeah. in a uh, tube layout. Yeah, very, very and, much and it so. it's exactly what I said. They had their feet either on the rail or tucked underneath and the, and the train pulled out. And I think the way that the, the, the system, the tube system works is when the train is stationary, there isn't any, or there's, I don't know whether there's no juice in the rail, mm. but when the train goes to move, the juice increases. Yeah, yeah, to let to put, get the drag yeah, going. I, yeah, I don't really know the technical thing of it, but I'm pretty yeah. sure that when a train comes past, the the, the amount of electricity sort of increases. Mm, you know? That's right. I don't really know, but you know, you know, um, R.I.P. Whoever it was that passed away, like just to increase the the the, the purpose of you know the. the, the Clause: Do not fucking do this shit at home or out and about. It's um, it's fraught, isn't it? It's scary. That do you know? Like I was, I was gonna, I was gonna put a page in the in the book in my comic, like dedicated, you know, to all the writers that have passed away. Mm. And the and the list of names is ridiculous. It's so really? there's, there's like, it's almost like there's probably at least. 50 people on there, maybe more, maybe like near near enough 80 people. And, wow. And I just thought, you know what, I'm not going to put it in because I'll probably miss someone. Yeah. I'll probably someone will die. You know, I hate to say it, but someone has, people have died since I even made the list. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and like, so I just left it out because I thought I wanted to use it like a dedication page, obviously. Mm. But uh, you know, it's. I just thought, you know what, it's it's a bit, it's a bit sort of like depressing as well. And uh, you know, mm. obviously, it would have been nice, but then I don't want to leave people out, and so I just left it. I didn't put it in in the end. Why do Why do people lean so heavily to that level of dan- life risking danger? I mean, D- DDS as a crew, even now, 
hold such no, notoriety towards that? Um, is it the yeah? Is it the boo? Is it the boost that? Is is it that? Is it uh, us public lean towards it, or is it is it um, is it self uh, um, self fulfilling, or or is it that it's peer pressure? No, I'd say it's more. In my experience, it was more of um, doing the things that hadn't been done, right? You know, and and often like the things that hadn't been done were more dangerous. Mm. You know, so like I remember, like Elephant and Castle, for example, another tube layup, like underground, deep level, sort of you know bubble train tunnels where there's no clearance madness um it just just scares me when you start talking about it all i think myself is like how do you (laughs) elephant Elephant hadn't been done since like 93 i think fume and neat and that lot maybe regret as well had done it but they Mm. hadn't been back you know all them years and it was like 2005 and we've done it again and um but it was you know, it was because it, we'd done everything, you know, there were, it was just looking for other things to do. And then we'd done, we, we did Victoria like a year later. Mm. We were looking for things that hadn't been done. You know, basically we're the first people to do Victoria. Mm. Me, Fume, Tox and uh, Coz, Coza, big up Coza. Yeah. Wow. Big up. Big Coza, up Coz. The king, the king of London for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. He smashed it. Fucking absolutely destroyed it. Yeah. We'll talk. But um, yeah, so I think it was more of a thing we we were looking. We weren't trying to do dangerous things, but they just ended up being the things that we hadn't done yet, or or no one had really done. Mm-hmm. You know, so it wasn't like a conscious thing. Um, but but I think you know danger was always there. You know, especially when you're doing things around moving trains, like you know we did a lot of um, bush bombing. So bush mm-hmm. bombing for those of you who don't know is when you plot up in a bush, you hide in a bush, and when a train stops at the station, at the platform, you jump out and you tag the back the side of the train. Mm-hmm. But obviously that that can be dangerous as well because, you know, the train pulls off, like, you know, you get something snagged on the thing or yeah. you know, on the train. and Feet I mean, under something, anything, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is, is that we used to, the way that we used to get down to these plots was we'd ride the train into the station and then when it stopped, we'd get in between the carriages and jump down. Oh, but, you know, God. obviously, when you do it, you can see it's it's safe and that. But you know, things can go wrong. You know, yeah. you can slip. You have can you slip. experienced that? Has that ever been happened? Yeah, I've, you? Had, I've had. I had one time. I was. Um, I was not not from not from. Well, to, to be honest, actually, I did, me and Fume bush bombed in, and we did some bush bombing in G once. Wow. Which is like a mad one because yeah. we, basically, there's a train that comes from High Street, Ken. It goes through G Road and it goes down through a tunnel and then up and then it comes out on the far left-hand side if you're looking at Earl's Court, towards yeah. Earl's Court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah anyway, so basically it comes, it's like a little tunnel that goes underneath and comes back out again, right? Mm. But when it's coming out, there's a traffic light there and it stops, right? So basically it's a bush bombing plot, but you have to get there and getting there is a bit of a mission because there's trains going through there. You've got district line. And yeah, there's there. a load going on around Yeah, there. you've got yeah. the district line going through and you've got the... Um, the the Wimbledon the Hammersmith and I mean the Wimbledon line going through so there's a lot oh, of trains mate. basically yeah. but but where you've got to bomb the train you've got to hide is one of the sort of alcove things but there's cables going across it as well mm. like so you, you you know what I mean you've either got to climb over them or get under them and and that's where the danger is is when you're kind of like getting out to tag the train you know you put your yeah. foot wrong you brush against the live rail and that's it. It's game, game over. over, yeah. So it's it's those kind of little mistakes that um, you know, I didn't have any I didn't have any problems there. But one time I was uh I was on the tracks between like Barons Court and um West Ken mm. on the district on the Piccadilly. Yeah, did it 
So that that part of the track is where the Piccadilly line goes down underground, right? Yeah. And um, I was bombing the walls of that bit that, as it starts to go down. Some good yes. reaches that you can see from the, the district line because the district line is above yeah. it. Sort of thing. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I had to get into one of the alcoves for the work. You know, that the, the, the set back off the off the off the wall, so you've got the safety opening. Yeah, the alcove bits. Yeah, yeah. But um, the train, when the train goes past, this is when I was a bit younger as well. I didn't really know. But the train, the pick went past so fast, it nearly sucked me out of the alcove. So I had to put, <laughs> I had to put my hands against the side walls and actually brace myself so it didn't push, pull me forward. You know what I mean? And that would be so. It was, it was the impact of that really, really? Like, oh, I'm going. I'm yeah, I shit myself properly when when that because I was on my own as well. Mm. And, and when, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, I was like, wow, that was close. I've got mm. that mad tingling feeling you get, you know, in your feet or what. I don't know how other people get it, but I've had it a few times. Like I said, in those sort of situations, you get that weird feeling that, you know, it's like a horrible, like, you know. Mm. Mm. But yeah, so, yeah, there have been the times when I've thought, fuck this, you know, it's just too much. Yeah. You know it sounds I mean? it. It sounds it. But yeah, um, we were we were always always up to something. Always. It's always interesting how that how there there were so many of you, and you know, <laughs> I'm talking in retrospect, of course, but because it still happens. But <laughs> but for its time, it, you didn't have the social media attention. No, so I the mean, things that we were seeing as an audience, and I say audience affectionately, you know, we'd be on the lines looking. I would be as a kid. It's actually unthinkable that, you know, the amount of little work you can get done with social media there and the exposure you get. You guys literally tr did triple the work to get the recognition out there and pe people to see you. That that was a, the daily operation. Yeah, I mean, that was just... That was just how it went, you know. It was like... um I remember Fume saying to me, oh, you know, don't, you don't start writing to give up, as in, like, you never give up. And, you know, part of that was being all city as well, you know, going everywhere and everywhere we went, we were going to be leaving a dub or a tag mm. or something. And, um, you know, it was just a kind of daily operation. That's how it was, you know. It's like um, just go out, meet up, get some paint, either go yard that night or the next night, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, that comes with, obviously, when you're young, you don't have responsibilities. You don't have to bring any money in. You're signing on. You're getting free money from the government. Mm. <clears throat> so there was a lot of us always meeting up at um, teacher's house mm -hmm. and Donker's house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from there it was, you know, some people would, would come painting. So, I mean, I remember one time we were like, we were at teacher's house at Christmas. And um, he, his house used to be right next to Parsons Green Yard. Like literally, we found, wow. we made a little, we made a little back way. Which actually, really? <laughs> yeah, I'll put that in the comic. We made a little Wicked. back way over, over this back wall that he had at the back of his block. You could climb over the wall and then just walk down this street and literally at the end of this street there was a big gate and you could get into that gate. It was like a wooden gate. You could just pull it apart and get in between the two leaves of it. And wow. then you're, you're in like a waste ground next to the yard so you could just take your time and cut the fence or do whatever you wanted to do. <laughs> and there was, a big shed, there was a big shed there that's gone now. But, I'll, yeah, I'll put this in the book anyway. But, um, you know, like I'll just remember like, People saying, oh, you know, oh, I'm going to go and do the yard, you know, and then they'd, they'd go over there because during Christmas Day, it's all shut down, as you know. Yeah, yeah. There's no tubes running. So this is over the space of sort of like 24 hours. Um, you know, there were just basically people coming and going from mm -hmm. the yard to his house and back, you know, back again and back and forth sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I remember that just being, it was just ridiculous. I think... That was when Sari was over. So one shift, Sari went with like Dyer and Teach or Dyer and Fume. 
Another wow. shift I went, I went with Teach and someone else. Do you know what I mean? It was that sort of setup. <laughs> um, Man, that's crazy. I mean, yeah, it blows my know, mind. Some, sometimes, you know, there'd be there'd be so many pe- people up his house that, you know, not everyone would be able to go to the yard. Or, you know, but I mean, you know, we didn't, you know, people didn't get excluded like, on purpose, but, you know, like there was usually a lot of us painting anyway. So you'd, you'd have like, you know, I've touched on this in the uh, in in the other podcast, but you know, you'd have a thing where we go yard, and then within like half an hour, whatever, forty five minutes, there'd be like I don't know, four or five window down whole car full color pieces. Because like, did, did that ever get too hot? Did like they must have got hot pretty? Yeah, quickly. We, you know, you didn't. There's certain yards you wouldn't paint the trains near the front or. All the, all the toys or the younger heads would have to paint near the hottest spot. And, and the the, pers- the people that were the most kind of established would get the spot right next to the hole in the mm-hmm. fence. Do you know what I mean? So Hierarchy, policy. Yeah, that's, you know, that, that you, can't, you couldn't escape that. But I'd, yeah. I was one of those people, I never really, I, I used to enjoy cutting the holes and knowing exactly what was going on and being the person that would know, like tell everyone, right, like the SGs coming round every such and such, or if there wasn't an SG, whatever, you know, just, I just used to like, I think it's probably a control thing. Mm-hmm. I just used to like to know what was going on. I wouldn't like to rely on other people telling me. Your own, you, yourself, you, you, yeah, you want like, to know, yeah. You know, but it just made my head calm. Yeah. I felt calm when I was painting because I knew I'd done all of the sort of like the, the, the legwork and, and I think when you when you I think when you when you go into a space right, and you you kind of settle down after a certain amount of time, mm. so all the people that were checking it out and 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 getting things ready, it was like we were already been in the yard. So when it come down to painting time, you already felt relaxed. Mm. So you didn't have that throb that everyone else had, but <laughs> you know the yeah, first yeah. Like, ten minutes when everyone's throbbing, and after that everyone settles down a bit, you know. Yeah. That's but, crazy yeah. that you you've you recollect that you recollect the the panic breathing you re- you recollect the first hit of the spray you're recollecting all this all this detail yeah and like not a lot of people that I've spoken yeah, I, to really yeah I, I, do you know what I think I think people do remember it they just don't know that they know it yeah. because one of the reasons that I kind of know that I know it is because I've had to think about things because of the book and stuff, because I've been creating this book and I'm trying to, you know, obviously it's difficult, but I'm trying to sort of express certain things in it. Mm. You know, how we, how we sort of saw things, you know, how we experienced them. Mm. And, uh, you know, part of that is the throb, you know, Mm. like the throb, like for example, I what I think I did Brixton one time, and that that was Zom's like Zom had that was right near his house, mm. and um, mm. I remember the feeling of going Brixton was horrible because I hadn't I hadn't done any check, I hadn't done any. I mean I helped I helped cut the thing open because there was a lot of work to get in there. We had to use iron angle grinders and all sorts. Wow! So I won't go into details because I know people still do it, but. Um, but we, um, but when I got in there, I just felt sick because I didn't know anything about it. Oh, you know? shit. It was one of those ones. There was quite a lot of us as well. Yeah. And I think Powell was with us, bless him, R.I.P. Powell. R.I.P. Powell, yeah. Um, and it was that horrible feeling that I don't really like of being in a, in a yard that I've never been before, plus it's in an cl- enclosed space. So if they come for you, Police come, you've got limited options to get away. That's claustrophobic in a bottle, yeah, mate. Yeah, and you're painting against the wall. There's no yeah. space to paint. You're painting kind of like sideways. Like, it's, it was, no. you know, it's like there's a lot of, but yeah, I remember that feeling of like not knowing and being trapped and that. It's not nice. But like I said, a lot of the other times, I don't know, I, I, I kind of, I, I did quite a lot of stuff on my own when I was younger 
Mm. And it kind of gave me confidence later on in what I was doing. So I would like to sort of, me and Fume would often be the ones that prepared the, the yards and that. Yeah. You know, and uh, we... we but there's a, that's a level of proficiency, right? That's, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of... A lot of um, I, but I think that comes from wanting to feel calm. I think we both mm. needed that as painters. Mm. You know what I mean? We both, whereas other people didn't give a shit. Mm. Other people were happy just to be brought along, but it's like tourists and that, mm-hmm. you know? But um, I didn't like that because I didn't feel relaxed enough. You know, my my graph wasn't the, the best at the best of times. So the more relaxed I was, the better it would probably come out. Not that I thought about that then, but thinking back, that's that's probably how it, how it used to work, you know. Your graph was fucking great, brother. Oh, it's, it's, it holds such a, you know, a beautiful memory in my head of, of such a time. Fast forward, actually, slightly. Uh, so, how how did how was Chrome and Black forged? Because this this certainly was ahead of its time as well wasn't it as a shop as, yeah, a, yeah. as, as well, an establishment it was it was it was kind of like the legacy the carry on of of the first shop in Brixton HQ that's right that, sh- that Steve's had um and um and and Sh- and Sham right and Sham yeah well Sham was selling records and Steve's brought him in on the paint side of it because that's he it. Was, out of the kindness of his heart anyway so whatever happened with that shop happened and he he basically introduced us to the uh, suppliers of the paint, and that was it. It was you know, other than that, me and Zom put our money together. The little it wasn't a lot, mm. and just sort of enough to basically fit out the shop. Um, and and you know, between fitting out the shop and going over to Germany to meet the suppliers, wow, one of them. And we mm. went to Spain to meet MTN. Um, yeah, that was it, really. We put our money together. We've we got a chippy to build us the things. Um, Milo Milo Chase, big up Milo if you ever see this. He's a Brazilian <laughs> guy, lovely guy. He's, nice. a, he's a writer and a street artist as well. Wicked. But um, yeah, so we you know basically the whole thing was built around the size of a of a of a spray paint box. So Steve's was very instrumental in telling us, look, build your storage around the size of, of spray paint boxes. Right. Right. Okay. So we built these, these storage units, which were essentially like MDF boxes deep though, with thick like MDF. So it was super strong because they were Mm. really tall. I don't know if you ever saw, yeah, it rings bell. I remember, of course, I remember the shop. Are you talking about so? But in terms of storage, this was literally about stacking the the. the yeah, the, so, so you've got your paint racks that everyone sees when they come in. They can see right. the hands in the racks, right? Yeah. And behind that, you have to have boxes of the of the paint. Because yeah, that's right. Each rack holds seven cans of each color, but you know that could run out in ten minutes. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, we had to have. We had to have more paint stored anyway. So that kind of dictated, that kind of dictated what, um, you know, the sort of size constraints of, and the shelving took up like a lot of the space in the old shop. Mm-hmm. Well, we had two, there were two shops in fact. So there was one that we had from 2009. I think we opened in on April the 2nd, 2009. And I remember that shop so well. Yeah, that was a good shop, man. Yeah, that was a banger. That, that for me was my favourite, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, for me as well. Like the memories in that shop, because it was all new and, you know, the people yeah. that passed through and Robbo, Robbo, yeah. Robbo come through there and, yeah. you know, it was, it was really, it was a, it was a mad time. Um, There's a lot of, lot of um, events we did. Yeah. You know, we did the Battle of Waterloo. We had about three or four of them. Crazy. They were good. You know, we wanted to give something back to the community. So yeah. we gave them, you know, we got, we tried to got, get sponsors from people like Stussy and so we could give away GOMs for the prizes. And in mm. fact, we gave away like 500 pound ones, cash out of our own pocket. Wow. Yeah, that's so, really something, man, isn't it? 
you know, like you say, community driven. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, we don't really, we, d- we never really spoke about these things, you know, we did never really kind of like got any recognition for what we try to give back in that way. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, we tried to do our bit. Um, we did, you know, I think what, the last one we did was at Trellick and we kind of, uh, me, me and Zom were flipping burgers for like, in fact, I think Zom felt he, he, we were flipping burgers for so long he started feeling sick from the fumes of the. Like we, I think we both, we both didn't eat meat for a week after that. You know, oh, so, don't doubt that. But yeah, like you know, stuff like that. You know, people don't realize all the hassle we went to to do all that kind of stuff. Mm. But yeah, um, yeah, it was it was a good it was a good it was a good um, business. Um, but you know. Things always change, especially in London. Things just run so fast. Yeah, they do. Don't of they? course, we were kind of like victims of our own success because as soon as other people saw what we were doing, they started selling paint, and yeah. slowly the piece of the pie diminished, 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 and you know, it 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 became it didn't be, it wasn't as lucrative as it was in the beginning. Yeah, and that's course, right. In the beginning, people were very like, oh, yeah, I don't buy my paint from uh, anyone who's not a writer and all this kind of thing, which is, you know, it's applaudable. It's a good thing, loyalty and all that. But then Mm -hmm. that kind of died off, you know. It didn't last. It didn't last very long. Some people stuck to it, but, you know, when other people started selling paint and trying to undercut us and, you know, all this kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, people started uh, shopping around and, coming back to us and saying, oh, I got this for five pence cheaper. And, you know, like you have to deal with all that kind of side of it. And Yeah, that, that, that doesn't make sense. I never has. I mean, if you're, but I guess it's a, it's, it's a, it's a dance you've got to do, right? Okay. There's the battle of the, the prices, mm. but also it's the diet It's diversifying when you feel like there's something, you know, coming over the hill, I guess. And uh, like going back to HQ, you know, they they had they had a radio station at one stage, didn't they? They, Did they, they? Yeah, yeah, to my knowledge, I remember Sham saying that he was going to set up a, a radio station and like you say, the the record store element of it was definitely yeah. there as well. I remember doing I remember doing a uh, uh an in-store there once, which was pretty fun cool. So yeah, I guess it's all about diversifying when the time's right, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they they kind of they they um they, like I said, they paved the way for what Chrome and Black was. Yeah. We learned a lot from what told us. Mm. I mean, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to say. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Um, we'll edit it. And, um, yeah, we learned a lot and we just, you know, we kind of carried it on and learned our own way. But like I said earlier, it was, you know, it was like try, we, we tried to make it into a brand, which, it, you know, it kind of is, but. It really is, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> That was the main kind of that was that was what um you know we were trying to do with it and um yeah that's you know it is what it is. So yeah. how come how come you left uh Chrome Black? Oh everything changed in my life, my personal life, you know. My missus wanted to wanted to move out of London, mm-hmm. you know. So there was there, there was a lot of things going on at that yeah. time. Plus then COVID happened. Of course, it's wow. a crazy time. Yeah, it's you know? a crazy time, isn't it? Do you ever do you ever get nostalgic and want to? I mean, I dare say you paint still, but um, you know, lots changed in Brighton. Correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. To be honest, I'm 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 at a different stage in my life. To be honest, mate, it's not really. I'm not really yeah, I'm not really, you know. Um, I'm not missing London in that way. I'm not really partying anymore. I'm not really paying anymore. Do you know what I mean? So for me, you know, it's like, what's, you know, what's there? Obviously I've got a few mates there, but you know, it's like, mm. it's, you know, life just takes you where it takes you, you know? Yeah. It's, I, I, I try not to question it too much and just try and just live every day, you know, and get the best out of every day and just don't look too far forward. Don't think about the past and all that game, you know, just mm. trying to focus on what you're doing and, you know. Where can uh, people uh, get the book? Is it is Zoo Patrol Comics? Yeah, ZooPatrolComics.com. That, that'll be the, um, 
that would be my site. So basically with the book, there's going to be two editions. So one of them is going to be the collector's edition. Nice. It's got slightly different, well, it's got a few more extra bits of artwork in it. Um, the paper's a bit nicer, a bit of a different finish on the paper. Um, and I've which done is- some other other bits to it that aren't in the the, uh, the international edition, which is kind of going on release, mm-hmm. sort of Amazon and other big bookstores. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll basically zoopatrol.com and then my Instagram, Jan77DDS or Zoo Patrol Ooh. Comics. On Insta, yeah, how much man, is it going man. for? How much is the the book? It's gonna be forty quid. Fucking the great! Collector, the collector's edition, forty quid. Yeah, and the, the international one's gonna be thirty two ninety nine. I think. Get it, people! Do not sleep on this. This is an important movement right here. The beginning like of I something said, awesome. It's um, the collector's edition is is you know markedly better. Mm-hmm. quality wise you know like the, the thought of, of, of you know there's little things i've changed there's you know there's little extra bits in there it's 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 definitely it's definitely um slightly diff- you know it's noticeably different yeah yeah but in a, on in a, obviously in a positive way very good well we'll make sure that uh this will definitely go out on the day of the of the comic drop um Jan, man, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, my guy. We did it. <laughs> we actually did it at last. Fucking it was only a matter of time, my friend. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Look, Killer Killer podcast. Out like it was out of fashion. Jan's inside the place. Get that comic, all right? Thanks for having it? me, bro. My pleasure, my brother. Thank you so much. Listen, people, sharing is caring. Get yourself to comic as well, all right? Don't try this at home. You know where it is. Killer Keller Podcast. Our lady was out of fashion, all right? You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to one and I wouldn't. Peace. Big up, big up. Wow, that was quite...